Now, earlier on, we basically went and visited a leather making company that is known as Manje Leather. And let's look at what we gathered before we talk to one of the directors. Last year in January when we got a few people to train but we registered in May and started operating in October because that's when our trainees were ready to start making shoes. We've been selling shoes since then and it's it's an untapped market, I can say that, because not many people have the idea to make shoes and people know it's genuine products because it's pure leather from the, the hides and skins that they see us dealing in, so they know they can trust our products and our employees are trained really well, they know how to make the products that they're making. So you, they, people, initially it was hard to get people to trust you because you tell people you're making shoes and they think it's something <laughs> that's uh, funny looking or something, but when they buy your shoe for the first time and they see that it's quality product, they always come back. So you always have to make sure your product is perfect so that they come back and promote you as well. Because I don't know, then you can find large scale production of leather shoes, which you know are quality products, because most people only deal in repairs. So we wanted to take it to a level that can even go nationwide and maybe international sometime. Produce official shoes for men. We have sharpshooters and block shoes for between sizes 39 to 45, which is the largest. As well as for ladies, we have flat shoes because they're very comfortable. You can wear them the whole day. For children, we have school shoes, both girls and boys, which are the original taffy design that we're all used to, as well as for girls that they wear to school and are comfortable in and can play around in. Really hard to find good Kenyan products that are pure leather shoes because you'll buy a shoe and after a few days it's already coming apart. And as well as school shoes because when we were growing up we had good school shoes but right now it's very hard for children to get good products that are also affordable and that will last let's say a whole year in school until you grow out of it. So. That was the idea we wanted to create a good product that would last you a whole year in school. You can even pass it down to your small brother or sister so that it, you know it's a good product made from leather because of the quality of hides and skins that you get because a lot of the pastoralists like to brand their livestock. So when it's turned, you can still see the branding marks as well as how they slaughter. They put knife cuts which translate to holes when you turn the leather so you get a finished leather product that has holes in it which is really hard to use because you need a big piece to be able to cut out your patterns as well as getting people to believe that you have good products because when they hear you're making shoes they'd assume they're just substandard. The budget that was read for the 2018-29 year actually favors our business because as you know the big four agenda includes manufacturing industry which we fall under the government allocated around 400 million for the leather industry, which will eventually mean that you get better leather products and better, no, sorry, better leather to make our products. In five years, we see ourselves nationwide because we want to make the process automated. Right now, it's mostly handmade. So if you make it automated, you have more shoe production in a day, get branches all over the country and provide places where people can get good product and wholesale even to schools all over the country. All right, and uh, I am now joined by Nellia Swanjiko, who is a director at Manji Leather. Thank you for joining us this morning. And uh, great inspiration right there. Let's start right from the beginning. How did you start um, a leather, or rather a shoemaking company? Uh, okay, our, my father deals in hides and skins, so we'd be talking about the idea of taking it to another level, which means taking the hides and skins that we already had and turning them in a tannery in Athi River. Mm -hmm. So last year, around last year, there was a very long lecturer's strike, which gave me time to be able to focus on this. So that's when we started turning leather, got the finished leather back, we trained a few people, and 
they started making shoes out of the leather that we had already. Right. So uh, you took the opportunity from the lecturer's strike to yes, see what you was, can... <laughs> it was a blessing in disguise. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what gave you the idea of now moving it to the next level? Because I'm sure even when you're dealing with heights, you could deal with them and even sell them at that point. But what gave you the idea or the impetus to you know, move to the next level? We noticed that it's really hard to get good shoes that are affordable and made from pure leather, especially Kenyan made. It's very hard to get that. And we live in Kajado North, which is in Kajado, and there's so much livestock all around. So it's ready market, and you already have buyers because everyone will need shoes. Mm. You can't At some point, live they definitely will need <laughs> shoes. without shoes, yes. All right, and how did you get started now on that? And, and what are some of the things that you need, you know, like in terms of capital, what did you need to put in? First, we needed people to train because it requires manpower and we needed a trainer, we needed a few machines. We started out with the sewing machines because that's what you need to put the patterns in the shoe and everything. So our capital was mostly focused on buying the machines and on training our staff mm -hmm. as well as paying the trainer. As well as, well as paying yes. the trainers. All right, and what are some of the challenges you possibly faced as you were beginning? Uh, getting genuine people who will tell you the right thing because it's unfortunate that people try to exploit you because they know that you're green in this business and they want to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So to get genuine people who will help you and also to be advised on what to get, what's better. Because I think the first time we bought a bad machine because we were advised wrongly. Mm -hmm. You get something that's not strong enough to sew leather because it's tough. So definitely getting good advice as well as people who are dedicated to train because it took about six months. Mm -hmm. It was a long period it of was a long training. Period. And where, where do you even start training of shoes? I mean, I would never imagine making a shoe. I mean, it looks simple, but I'm sure the process is not as simple as it looks. Yes, when you start, it seems impossible. But then if you have, it's almost like a classroom because you go knowing almost zero. Mm -hmm. and then slowly by slowly, you're trained, you're taught how to cut out the pattern, how to sew it together and all that up to the finished product. And you're like, wow, it's actually not that hard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And what has been your strategy of penetrating into the market? Because the shoe industry is not new to uh, Kenya mm -hmm. and specifically shoes that are imported. Uh, the first thing that we needed to know is how to make a quality product that is affordable because that's the problem. If you want good leather products, they'd have to be very expensive, they especially expensive. for men and also children because we've grown up knowing only one brand sells good shoes. So mm. we wanted to challenge that and make it better and cheaper. So that's, that was our main aim and we've been able to achieve that, mm -hmm. yes. And have you found like there's resistance in the market, because, especially by virtue of the fact that these are, like you've mentioned, they, there are certain brands that are known to have yeah. you know, sold shoes for a long time, but this is a new brand. Definitely when you started, you tell people you're making shoes and they don't expect much from you mm -hmm. until they see it and they're like, you made this here, are you sure? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but as they keep coming back and they trust us now, they're the ones who are selling our name because they go tell someone else. So it was definitely hard to start, mm -hmm. but and also because they were training. So the first pairs of shoes weren't as good, but as they keep practicing and as people get to know our name, they start trusting us and they see us dealing in hides and skin. So they know we won't go and make it out of Rexine. Because mm. most of the times when you're told it's a leather shoe, it's actually made out of Rexine, which is lining. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be inside the shoe, not the the outside. Yeah. Now, maybe educators here in terms of real leather, because you walk into many shops and they'll tell you this is real leather. And sometimes it's very difficult to tell. I mean, when you turn the, the, the tongue, or, you know, you, when you turn it, some, sometimes you'll find like it's real leather, mm -hmm. but it's normally very <laughs> difficult to tell, unfortunately, until you've bought and worn it yeah. and it begins to crack. It's definitely a challenge because most genuine leather products, most of them are imported, which is unfortunate because it's Kenya. We have a lot of pastoralists. Mm -hmm. Uh, most times, if you have a genuine leather product, you'll see that they've exposed a bit of it because they want you to check and to verify. So most of the time, the part where you tie your laces, mm -hmm. it's usually exposed. So you can turn it inside and you'll see it's leather. You can touch it, you'll feel it's mm -hmm. tough. Mm -hmm. It's tougher than, you can't just fold it and it will comply. It's tough. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
All right, and uh, we want to take a short break, but we'll be right back. And we are discussing your money right here with Nelly Swanjiko. Manje Leather is the company, and she's a director. But we'll take a short break. We'll be right back.